Hi, just as a reminder, I'm a narrator on Chilling, the awesome horror app that features over 1,000 horror stories, over a dozen narrators, some of whom you might know from YouTube, as well as full-length novels and exclusive series and Chilling originals. You can select and change the ambient sound in the background of the stories whenever you want, without affecting the story you're listening to, and we release hours of new stories every week. Click the link in the description to download and start your free trial to see if you like it. I have a cabin a few hours north of where I live. It's out in the wilderness, and it's where I like to go some weekends to hunt and fish, or to just relax. I got the cabin about five years ago, and I've gone up frequently. However, over this past year or so, work has been pretty busy, and I really haven't gone up as much. This past summer, I went up for the first time in like six months. I was really excited to go up there. One of my favorite things about it is that I have 24 acres of land with the cabin, so it's very isolated. I went up on a Thursday after work because I didn't have to go in on Friday. After the two and a half hour drive, I pulled into my long driveway and up to the cabin. Then I went inside for a bit and headed out for some fishing for pretty much the rest of the day. When I went back inside for the night, I had some food and got tired pretty fast. I was going to go to bed then at about nine o'clock so I could get an early start to the next day. But before I could even get to my bed, I heard a knock on my front door. This was really weird. I'd never had anybody knock on my door all the way up here. I walked over to the door, which didn't take me long because my cabin's not too big. When I opened it up, nobody was there. I went outside and looked around. My cabin is pretty much surrounded by woods, so I guess somebody could have easily run away. But the bigger question to me is, why was anybody out here on my property? I shouted out loudly that this was private property, so if whoever knocked needed anything, they should speak up now or leave. I stood by the door for a few moments, listening for any kinds of noise, but heard nothing. After that, I went back inside and went to bed. It was about five minutes later when I had just laid down and was about to drift off to sleep when I now heard a knocking at my bedroom window. I quickly sat up and turned around to look out the window. I didn't see anybody there though. I walked over to the window and looked outside of it. I just saw the woods again. There was still enough time between the knocking and when I looked over for whoever was there to duck down and run away though. Now I was pretty ticked off. I opened up the window and shouted at whoever was there to leave me alone and once again I said they were on private property. Once more I went back to my bed and attempted to fall asleep. However, now I wasn't really that tired anymore. I was sort of wound up from being annoyed at whoever had kept knocking on my door and window. I laid there with my eyes closed trying to fall asleep. As I was laying there I thought I was hearing some movement in the trees near my woods. Maybe I was paranoid now, but I was expecting to hear a knock at any moment, but I didn't. Eventually, I was able to fall asleep. The next morning, I woke up to the sound of a knock at my door. But it wasn't to the door outside of my cabin. It was to my bedroom door inside the cabin. I sat up in my bed and heard a few more solid knocks. Then, I reached under my bed where I kept my gun and slowly got up. The knocking stopped, and I walked over to the door and swung it open. Nobody was there. I walked outside my bedroom and through the entire rest of my cabin, which was just a bathroom and a main living room area. It was obvious whoever had been there was now gone. However, the front door to the cabin was left wide open to the outdoors. After that, I decided to go home early. I never saw who broke in, and I really have no idea how they got inside. I'm sure I had locked my door, and none of my windows appeared to be broken. I didn't go back to the cabin for about a month after that, but I have been back two times since, and each time, nothing strange has happened. When I was a kid, my grandparents had a cabin, and they would let my parents, as well as aunts and uncles, use it all the time. It was about an hour away from our house, and it was always fun to go up there. The cabin itself was pretty big, however, there was no electricity or plumbing, so as a kid, that always bothered me. My family went up there for a weekend once when I was 10. I remember that we had a pretty big amount of land with the cabin itself, and I'm not even sure if there were any other cabins nearby at all. My family's kind of big. I'm the youngest, and I have three brothers and two sisters, and then both of my parents were there as well. When we got to the cabin, we started playing games outside and that kind of stuff. My dad brought some burgers and hot dogs to grill, and after dinner, we had a campfire and sat around it having s'mores. At one point, I really had to go to the bathroom, which unfortunately we had to use the woods for. I had gone earlier in the day, but now it was nighttime. 
I was sort of scared to go into the woods by myself, but I was also shy going to the bathroom near other people when I was that age, so I didn't want to just duck behind a tree. I walked out down a path that led into the woods, and when I could no longer hear the talking of my siblings, I felt comfortable enough. I took a few steps into the woods and went. Afterwards, I walked back to the path and immediately heard noises of brush and leaves moving from about 20 feet away on the other side of the path in the woods. I thought it was possibly an animal, like a deer, because it sounded big. I started to run back on the trail, but I heard whatever it was moving towards me as well, as if it was trying to pass me. I stopped and froze in my place. I thought whatever animal was there would cross the path ahead of me, but instead, it stopped just short of the path. I watched the area where I had heard the noise intently. Then, I noticed what appeared to be a person hiding behind a tree. All I saw was the face, but it looked like some guy watching me from behind a tree in our woods. The way he seemed to be looking at me really freaked me out, like he was insane or something. I sprinted all the way back without looking. I got back to the fire where everyone else was, and I wasn't followed. I told my parents that I saw a guy in the woods. My parents didn't seem to believe me at first, with me being the youngest kid and all. I remember my dad telling me that the property my grandparents owned was very large and there was an extremely slim chance anyone else would be out there. But to make me feel better, he went back into the place on the trail where I had seen the guy. But by now, the guy was gone and we didn't hear anything either. We went back and I just felt better now that I was with everyone and not alone in the woods anymore. I had a few s'mores by the fire and afterwards we all went inside to go to bed. Inside the cabin, there were a few bedrooms with bunk beds so everybody had a place to sleep. Without TV or video games, there wasn't much to do, and this was before most smartphones, so we all pretty much just got ready for bed. I remember that I was walking to the bedroom that I was staying in, when I heard my older brother Tony come inside and say that he saw a creepy guy standing outside the cabin. Everybody gathered around to the front window that looked outside the cabin to the front yard. And there he was. The same guy who I had seen in the woods was now standing in our front yard. He looked just as creepy as the first time I had seen him. He was wearing a dark colored sweatshirt and what looked to be baggy and ripped jeans. The guy was just standing there facing our house. My dad said that he was going to go out and talk to the guy. He walked out the front door and I heard him call out to the man asking who he was and how he could help him. But almost right after my dad started to speak, the guy started running straight for him. My dad went back inside quickly and locked the door. The guy tried opening it and then started banging on the door. My dad luckily did have a cell phone back then and was able to get a signal. He used it to call the police. The guy kept banging at the door and after a while finally stopped and seemed to go off somewhere. It took a while for the police to arrive way out there, but they eventually did get there and searched the property and found the man hiding in the woods. This story takes place back when I was in 8th grade. It was summertime and I played traveling baseball for my city. One of my teammates parents had a cabin up north and a bunch of us, maybe all of us, were invited one weekend. It worked out because we had a Friday night game in a city like an hour or so north of where we lived and his parents cabin was like 10 minutes away from there. We were just going to stay one night and then go back on Saturday. I think like three other parents were staying over too because they were good friends with the kids parents. Anyways, after our game, a bunch of us went to the cabin. I think there was maybe eight of us there, and we had two tents set up for us kids, four in each. All of the parents got to stay in the actual cabin, and we had to stay out in the yard because of space. When we got there, we just had some food and played around on the volleyball court they had in the yard. When nighttime came, we had a campfire just for us guys, and all the parents were hanging out inside for the rest of the night. We sat around the fire for probably hours, and eventually got tired and decided to start going to bed. We all got into our tents. However, being the 8th graders that we were, we started joking around and prank phone calling friends and stuff like that. I don't even know what time it was when we finally actually all got sleepy and decided to go to bed. When we did, everyone fell asleep really quick, except for me. The lights all went out and everything became silent. My sleeping bag was at the far end of the tent next to the door to the outside. I had a hard time getting to sleep. It just wasn't that comfortable of a sleeping arrangement. The ground was hard, my sleeping bag wasn't that nice. Plus, at that age, I still had a hard time falling asleep away from home. I laid there for probably like an hour, just trying to get comfortable and fall asleep. I was afraid to move too much and wake somebody else up. At one point, I thought I heard a noise coming from outside. I looked over and saw a shadow of what appeared to be a guy standing outside the tent. Whoever it was seemed to be just standing there, facing the tent, looking at it but they were on the other side of the tent, not the side that I was near. I watched them for at least a couple of minutes. They moved a little, but not much. 
I figured it was one of the guys from the other tent messing with us or something. Maybe it was someone else who couldn't sleep like me. I decided to get up and go say hi to him. I quietly unzipped the tent opening and stepped outside. It was cool out now and it felt refreshing. I walked around to the side of the tent to the other. As I did, I heard whoever was there move away as if they were trying to hide from me. I went all around the whole tent and when we got back around, whoever was there ran off into the night. I assumed 100% that it was one of the guys from the other tent playing around and joking and I just laughed and then went back into my tent. When I got back inside, I was actually feeling kind of sleepy now and thought that I would be able to fall asleep. I zipped the tent back up and got inside of my sleeping bag. I laid down and closed my eyes. Eventually, I did fall asleep. I'm not sure how long I actually fell asleep for, but I do know that I woke up sometime later when it was still dark out. The reason I woke up was that somebody was unzipping the tent right in front of my face. I watched the tent slowly open, but the person unzipping it was just some random guy. It wasn't any of my teammates, and it wasn't any of the parents either. I didn't recognize him at all. He had longer dark hair that came out of a cap he was wearing. When he saw me looking right back at him, he quickly disappeared and seemed to walk away. I looked and saw everybody else in my tent was still fast asleep. I moved over and woke up my teammate next to me, which was Zach, and he looked really confused. I told him what had happened, and it took him a minute to understand because he was still really groggy. I really didn't want to stay out there anymore, and I ran inside to the cabin. As soon as I got inside, thankfully, one of the parents woke up. I told them what had happened, and it led to a whole big thing. Everybody had to get up, and some of the parents looked around, but didn't find the guy, whoever it was. It was nearly 4 o'clock in the morning, and everybody moved their sleeping bags to the inside of the cabin, and we all slept on the living room floor for the rest of the night. I don't think anybody ever found out who that guy was. <laughs>